Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 2. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by Newfound Marketing, a digital marketing agency located in St. John's, Newfoundland. Visit our website at newfoundmarketing.ca to find out how we can help your business grow. Newfound Marketing, a compliment to your marketing team. And here we are, another uh, edition of Gale Force Winds, and what a pleasure it is to be down on the Bjorn Peninsula, the beautiful south coast of Newfoundland. Jerry and I were down here doing some work with a client, and lo and behold, we walk, we drive by this amazing coffee slash cannabis store, and I said, we need to have a conversation about that. So here we are, back on Gale Force Winds. I'm Alan Dale, with as always, my good buddy from the East End of St. John's, Jerry Crew. How are you, Jerry? Well, I'm doing really well. Uh, I thank you, first of all, to you. Well, we pulled you out of a meeting. Yeah. Uh, we have, we're doing some work, as Alan said, and it, it ended a bit early, and we're on our way to Clarenville, but uh, yeah, we just pulled you right out of a meeting, and here you are, lights, camera, action, Alan. 100%, Jerry, and we always uh, joke with our guests, uh, just say it's like we're having a coffee together, and <laughs> And behold, here we are, having <laughs> a coffee together. So Taylor, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. I'm Taylor Giovanetti. I'm originally from St. Lawrence, Newfoundland, which is a small community just up the road, <laughs> about 30 minutes. Uh, so I grew up on the Bjorn Peninsula. Um, I then, like every other, um, you know, after I gradu graduated high school, went to Memorial University, spent a lot of time in St. John's, and this full venture brought me back to the peninsula. Um, I grew up in a family of, there was five of us, I'm the middle child, um, family of entrepreneurs, guidance counselors, sex ed was fun growing up, <laughs> <laughs> my mother taught it to me, um, and um, yeah, so I mean from, from inception of everything I've been just working in the family business and entrepreneurial spirit. spirit. Tell me about this family of entrepreneurs. What other things were you guys involved uh, in? Well, I guess it stems from my grandparents. Um, they uh, built, owned, operated a garage and the hotel that's still existing in St. Lawrence, Ocean View Hotel, which our family, um, my immediate family still runs. So I grew up making pizzas, making beds, doing all the things. Um, and then we also, uh, my father, RJG Construction, uh, has a construction company that uh, you know started out uh, you know with one dump truck and now you know hauling fish in the daytime and ice in the nighttime or vice versa um, and now it's a uh, very successful wharf and dredging uh, company here in Newfoundland. So five kids, you're the middle one. What are they? What were your big influencers growing up? What were uh, you involved in? I, I was, well, my big influencers were definitely my, my parents. Um, they worked very, very hard and they were very passionate whatever they did. Um, I played a lot of basketball growing up. Uh, the community sense, you know, growing up in St. Lawrence, I mean, friends, family, it was always this community sense. So that, that was a huge influence of uh, who I am today. And then, um, my grandmother, my grandmother was also a, uh, a wild one, we'll say, it was my mother's mother, and we used to call her Rock and Roll Nan. So <laughs> rock and Roll Nan. Rock and Roll Nan. She was that Nan who uh, listened to heavy metal and uh, didn't give a Joe Jesus what anyone thought, <laughs> so it was, and it was wonderful. Right. Um, yeah, she was a huge part of my inspiration. And was she in the family house or did she live close no, by? No, she actually lived in Florida uh, for, and she's now passed many, many years, but she's still to this day, every day I, I'm reminded by her. Right. I think I remind myself of her probably. So was she a business lady as well? No, she wasn't. No? She just uh, lived life. Awesome. very well yeah yeah live life to the fullest day eh? to the fullest every we can day. all learn by that can't we yeah it's uh i've learned a lot more in this pandemic to live life to the fullest i can tell you that for free so mm. tell me that now you left this beautiful yeah. part of newfoundland and you went into memorial university and i did business you did business yeah tell us about that whole experience yeah and that whole experience i mean it's i um I was 17, so it's hard to really know what you want to do at 17 years old. I right. still try to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, did business. It was a, it was a wonderful thing to kind of understand what life was about. You're living on your own. You're doing your thing. You're meeting new people. Um, then I dabbled after university. I uh, actually had the opportunity to run across Canada. 
um, with the Torch Relay. Really? Cool. Yeah, so I uh, worked with a marketing company who represented Coca-Cola at the time. So we were the convoy in front of um, uh, in front of the torch bearer. So our, our responsibility was to excite the crowd and excite right. the torch bearers and, and represent Coca-Cola. And it was a job or an opportunity of a lifetime because it was 106 days straight working in winter of Canada right across from Newfoundland right to Vancouver. So that was in 2009. So and you were on the road, I literally. Physically on the road. Every every night was a different hotel, different community. There was a, a, a thousand, I don't know, it's around a thousand communities, 12,000 torchbearers. Wow. Yeah. You must have met some amazing people. Yeah, it was. It was Tell me about that. What, what sticks out in your mind about that experience? I think it was, it was the as wonderful as it was, we literally worked 12 hour days for 106 days straight. So that the actual physicalness of running and surviving each day was, right. was, was a lot. So you became really close friends quickly with this convoy of people going across Canada. Um, not to mention you got to see the Canada and this wonderful place. But what sticks out in my mind is definitely the connections I made then, I still have really, really close friends Is that, that right? I, yeah, still keep in contact with. Well, I mean, that's like, I mean, that's almost like that same connection that you would have with those people would be like being on a high level sports team or yeah. being in the military. You would have bonded with those. That's a mm -hmm. big, big mm -hmm. undertaking. Yeah, so that was, that was kind of my first job at a university. It was like, I was like, yeah, let's do it. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. and. <laughs> It was wonderful. It turned out to be wonderful. So then from there, I went into real estate and flipped some houses, worked for some family businesses. But really, there was always something that was like, I knew there was more. I needed to, and I didn't hit the passion. I didn't hit exactly mm. what I was meant to do. Right. And so how I, long ago was this you were in university? Oh my God. Uh, well, I graduated in 2009. Okay. So, yeah. All right. You're just trying to put a yeah. bit of a time frame on yeah. that. Sorry for interrupting. No, you're making okay. a really good point. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so yeah, through working and uh, I had my son. My son was uh, almost two, and I was like, "There's something more." So it, how did we want to get into how I? Yeah, got into please organic? take us down. That's very it, important. It's a, it's a very organic story and, and how it happened. Um, I met my husband, and he was the you know, I guess my, my knowledge of cannabis before Oceanic was very much what I would assume a lot of people have knowledge on. Very like nil, none, yeah. and had a preconceived, you know, understanding from false beliefs, right. we'll say. Or what I've been told growing up, that cannabis is bad, or if you, if you smoke cannabis, you're a stoner and stoners are bad, which mm -hmm. obviously I've learned different. So when I met my husband, he consumed cannabis on the daily, and I've never, I, I never actually seen him stoned. Right. Um, so that was just w one of those things, and he needed it for his ADHD, and I understood it and I accepted it. But that was kind of where it sat mm -hmm. until we had we were building our home, and um, his grandfather couldn't really help us because of his arthritis and. Anyway, so in conversation, we're like, well, Walter, why don't you take some medical cannabis, medical marijuana? And uh, staunch Catholic, ex-smoker, all the stigma was just coming at me. And I didn't, I just had a neutral stigma. Yeah. So then I was like, okay. So I researched on it and I, I taught myself how to bake with it. I, at this point, still did not consume cannabis. I just, just purely wanted to help. Um, so I, I managed to bake some uh, hash brownies okay. and within a week of him consuming he was off his opioids and walking without a cane and it was like this like ding like aha moment in my life of huh there's something more to this so I started to research about medical cannabis and lo and behold there was a process and then the big light bulb came off is that Canada was legalizing it recreationally and no matter if it was medical or recreational, it had to come from a licensed producer. Right. So I was like, oh, I'll start there. <laughs> okay, but that's still a big leap. I know, it's a huge <laughs> leap. And honestly, it was it was a crazy leap when we look back on it, you know. And well, I go say, back. let's I, go I, back to the craziness. I, I say we because it's, it's myself and my husband who are the crazy ones. 
I always say that I'm I'm the dreamer, but he's the bigger doer. Right. You know, and he looks at me, he's like, Taylor, but, you know, in this beautiful store, he did it. Right. It is he, beautiful. He built it. He, he did all the tile. He did, laid all the floor. He, he did it. I went around with a camera, so I'll show that at this point. Yeah. So were you living here at the time? No, we were decided? not. So we you were, were in St. John's. So then I did, you know, like anyone would, a Google search of abandoned buildings in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that, and then a beautiful article came up about the beer and fish plant. I was like, huh. Even though I grew up in St. Lawrence, I wasn't still, like, it's only 30 minutes away, but, you know, my culture to Buren wasn't really there. So yeah. I picked up the phone, just cold called the town of Buren. And I knew at the time that the facility was a state-of-the-art facility, and it was only closed down in 2012. Uh, this was in 2016 when I was calling or so, 2017. Um, and um, the only reason they closed down was because the, the company decided to process it elsewhere. It was just too expensive to ship or whatever Very case. common story in Newfoundland. Very, very common story. So at the point in time, there was 125 uh, employees, which I found. I was like, oh, my God, that's devastating. But here's this beautiful building sitting there. So I just picked up the phone and cold called the town of Buren. And I'm like, okay, this is what I plan to do. Would you be willing to sell it? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm like you know what I'm gonna be doing, right? And yeah, that's fine. If you supply one job, we're happy. Wow. So, so because the town of Buren was just so, and I always say this, and I mean it, that everything just fell into place organically. You know, I didn't pick Buren, Buren kind of picked me. Right. Yeah, and uh, the town have been our biggest supporters since day one. So it just, it showed up and we're like, yeah, this is it. I got to say, sorry, I got to say something. You know what? Being in sales and business development for 30 years, a lot of people poo poo this, the cold call nowadays, you know? Yeah, no, you know what? That is a great story. It's a great yeah. cold call. Cold it, call. It, it's a real story, and, yeah. you know, I can't recreate that. And so we came out for our first kind of look, and we were like, whoa, this building is big. It's 63,000 square feet. <laughs> yeah, like it's not a small no. undertaking. But we were up for it. We're those crazy people. But I mean, it's, uh, so Taylor, <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful story about revitalizing mm -hmm. that plant. But now you've got to bring cannabis in. Right. And that's a so tricky it, it business. Took, it took my husband, uh, Colin Escott, um, and his crew of probably four or five, about a year or more just to strip it down. Because right. it was, it was, there was pens left on the cubicles mm. in the office. You know, literally when they shut down that Christmas, they just left everything and walked out. And nothing was done with it. So, you know, the there was some equipment and uh, whatnot stripped out of it uh, just for health and safety reasons, but there was still a lot to gut. Mm. So it took a solid year to gut. Um, and then we had all kinds of ups and downs with our, because we had an investor, and then we, the investor went, that went south, and then I found another investor, and that went south. Which is not uncommon in that business at no. that time, right? I raised $4 million three times. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of speechless here. <laughs> well, I'm still stuck on that 63,000 square foot building. Yeah. And not really like trying to figure out how to visualize putting all that together my yeah. god taylor keep so going keep telling keep us going. the story so, it's amazing okay, keep, keep asking questions no I so yeah so you strip the building so down strip the building down You've got, your investors are coming and going it's coming a fa go. it's a fast moving place right the cannabis still is, industry right? is still a roller coaster right. yeah 100 yeah because i mean we went from no stores to eight stores it, like there's it the story keeps going so we, um, and this is at the time, so it wasn't legalized, but we knew it was coming, so we put in our application with Health Canada, which took over two and a half years. Wow. Okay, the, the, the application was like this right. thick in paper. This it was, is quite a leap of faith, because you've got the 63,000 yeah. square foot I, building. And if I can jump in there, Health Canada was trying to figure it out at the same time, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, and so were every province. So NLC is, um, Newfoundland Liquor Corp is our regular. Later. So right. they're trying to figure it out as well. So that everyone is just scrambling because, of course, I think, um, as I recall, it was supposed to be July 1st was opening, but it got pushed to October 17th. Right. Um, because no one was really ready. 
Yeah. At so the you, time. You got all this money. Yeah. Uh, so you you raised four million dollars. You get eight million dollars four times. What was no, it? Four million. Four million four three times. times. Okay. But I didn't get the, the first two four million. Okay. I'm just saying. So you were raising the money. You were yeah. buying the equipment, getting ready mm -hmm. to go. Who was the grower in the crowd? Um. Yeah. So we had some local. Uh, again, people organically kind of came to us. So. Um, we found local growers and we found local talent here that are just amazing. Yeah. They're so passionate. And what, what you have to understand about um, cannabis is that it's been illegal for years. So everyone who is passionate about it have been in the closet about it. Yeah. Right. So once you find the passionate ones, oh, they're just so happy to be free. And, right. and they're happy. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is literally on my doorstep. And I, we can do this on a commercial level and, and sell our beautiful product that we put so much work into to customers. But Taylor, still yeah. though, again, I mean, yeah. that's a leap too, right? To Huge go leap. from growing you know, a few plants mm -hmm. to now you've got a fish plant full. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Tell so me there, about that. there's definitely um, some automation. I, I mean, going from your basement to, you know, 2,000 square feet per room is a huge leap. And of course, you know, we just actually cut down. Um, we harvested it last week and we were comparing apples to apples from our first grow to and it's night and day even though we were proud as peacocks a year ago right. but just the the evolution to how well we grow now comparatively it's it, yeah it's is the it yield see. bigger or is the product all it, better? it's all, all it. everything it, yeah there's, there's so many the different aspects I mean there's yield there's the actual terpene um, Terpenes are like the essential oils within the actual plant. THC is what people usually talk about, THC and CBD. Those right. are definitely very important components because it's a THC. That's what people worry about or are interested yeah. in, rather. Yeah. Um, but the terpene profiles really where we um, try to focus and make sure that they have those nuances in there to create really good cannabis. Right. So just to give you an example, you know, um, linalool is a terpene that's found in cannabis, but it's also found in lavender. So you know what lavender does. Yeah. You know, it's, the, it's just the properties that it's calming, relaxing, sleepy. You know, so we carefully kind of pick which plant to grow based on that. So how many lines are like, how many different products would you be growing at any given time? Uh, right now we only have two rooms, but okay. our phase two is almost operation. And that is like, to comparison, um, we grow about a thousand kilos a year now, and we'll be up to 4,000 kilos a year when phase two opens. And where does your product go? Like, well, who's your biggest customer? Well, we are our biggest customer, okay. so I, maybe I'll, I'll talk to you about how we got into the retail sure, side of sure, things yeah. because we're we're vertically integrated. And I got to tell you, from yeah. the moment I walked into this facility, it is just beautiful. It really is, yeah. The finishes and and just it's everything, everything yeah. about it. So, yeah, I mean that's a really good what, what I wanted to create it on. I knew that if we were going to create product, that we needed to create a space that created a retail experience rather than this transaction. Right. This is a brand new, we're never going to see this in our lifetime, a brand new consumer product no. mm -hmm. or brand new industry no. rather. I mean, yes, cannabis has been around for years, but I really wanted to create that knowing that the stigma is still alive. Uh, we wanted to create that neutral, very comfortable, inviting space so mm -hmm. people felt comfortable enough to ask the questions that they may not want to ask. Right. You know, and then we also, um, we were the first drive through in Canada. And I fought tooth and nail for that. Uh, I mainly fought tooth and nail for that is because in Newfoundland, I'm not sure in other provinces, um, but um, as a parent, you always have your kids. Right, so NLC liquor stores here, you're permitted to bring your kids in and you know, like responsible adults, you just communicate or educate your child that hey, this is just an adult thing to do. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can't do that in cannabis, which I kind of understand in a, in a sense because it's new, but then you have the worry of how do you, as a parent, get receive safe and responsible cannabis. You're probably just gonna go to the black market still right. if you can't go, physically go in. Right. I mean. Um, so I just pushed for that um, and the stigma, you yeah. know, so it, it, it ticked off so many different categories. Okay, people who still have a stigma, they still have access to safe 
and, and responsible cannabis. Parents still have access with protecting your, their child. And then COVID came around. So that was perfect. Yeah. Right. You know? So instead of uh, curbside, we could offer the drive through And then the other thing that I we were not first of doing, but definitely sets us apart, is the coffee. We support a local brand, uh, Grossmore Coffee, here in Newfoundland. But I, not that I, I, I cared about serving coffee to normalize cannabis. Mm -hmm. And if I could get a bum in a seat, then we can educate. Because right. education is key. Yeah. Whether it's the simplest of what do, how do I roll a joint? Mm -hmm. How do I know when to stop? What do I do if I maybe took too much? You know, the, the questions that people don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to ask because yeah. they feel like they should know, but how would anyone know? No one's talked about it. Right. Yeah. Wow. It, it's pretty amazing. I mean, there's so much I want to dive into about yeah. the journey so Shoot. far. I know that Jerry will be intrigued by the entrepreneurial side. Like, what was, well, you go ahead and ask that, your famous question, Jerry. Well, you, well the thing that I'm always fascinated about is the transition from a paycheck mm -hmm. to your own business. And I will tell you, every entrepreneur I talk to, yeah. and Alan and I have done this ourselves, is when you transition from getting a regular paycheck to having yeah. your own business, it is scary. Yeah, it's but scary. most entrepreneurs, Taylor, kind of gloss over that. Just yeah. take us to the point where the decision is made <sighs> to do that. Okay. I'm uh, digging deep here yeah, now. Th and if it's one. too emotional. No, no, it's okay. If it's okay. too emotional, I don't care. I need to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it came to the point with my husband and I, he was, he's, he's equivalent to about 10 men, you know, in terms of his work ethic. Right. And he's exceptional. Um, and he was working for a lot of big projects in Newfoundland and they all loved him. They all really loved him, but he was never home. Based, and, based on that description, I understand why they loved him. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it came to the point where I knew that I wanted, I needed to expand my mind and do something more. I knew there was something more in me. And I knew that Colin was unhappy as well. So we just decided together, okay, enough is enough. He, he left Soldier's Pond and we, we just took that dive. But, but that decision was give us the, you know six months 12 yeah, months two years five years <laughs> it didn't happen overnight it did not happen overnight and we definitely had a lot of support from our families um because like i said we lost our investment so mm -hmm. we had to remortgage our house scary time we had to do all those things we were looking at each other like what the hell did we do yeah you know when you know shit happens yeah um but you know, the piece of advice my father gave us at one point when I swear we were ready to give up. He's like, you're 100 meters from the shore. You're going you're gonna to quit swimming now? I'm like, no, I guess not. It's it's a great analogy. Advice. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I, I can just imagine as you're sitting around the kitchen table yeah. or wherever that was and you get that call and say that $4 million is gone. Oh, you're like, awful. oh, my God. It was, right? it was awful. It was... E equally as high as yeah. when they call and say, okay, we're in, yeah. right? So those are, I mean, those are crazy times. A lot of times that you'd want to give up, right? Yeah, and we, we like, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there was a lot of times where it was questioning our decision. We, we, we won stores and then we lost stores and then we won stores again. It was all over the place. But yeah, so on this, on the store side, if you, if I'll just go on that route. So when we, finally kind of got things moving at the facility we were in chats with the government of Newfoundland and NLC and I don't know if you guys remember the canopy deal that was um, it's kind of gone away there yeah. now but essentially canopy came in and before legalization said hey we'll build this big facility um, and um, that deal entailed they would be allowed to have some stores based on production so we got a very similar deal to that. So based on production, we uh, received two, uh, we'll say, flagship stores. So this is the first one, and the second one is going into town on O'Leary Avenue. Um, and then from that, we knew that we were in the retail side, we knew that we were vertically integrated, but um, NLC then released another RFP for other stores in Newfoundland. So we went after them hard, and we were successful on another six. Wow. 
So we are now, so store number one is Buren, which is the first drive-thru in Canada. Where we are right where, now. Where we are right now. This is this is the home baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, lot of work went in here. And then we went to port bass for our second drive-thru. Okay. So it's right off the ferry. Yeah. We really focus on rural Newfoundland too, because we knew that of course everyone was gonna be in St. John's and that's where everyone cares about. But what about the other half of Newfoundland? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm from rural, so like, you Good know, you. we, we yeah. need to make sure that everyone, and we we also want it to be recognized as soon as you come off the boat, any boat, you see us first. Right. And we are the local brand. Um, so Port of Bass, and then we, um, St. John's East, so that's on Torbay Road uh, in the Coker's Meadow Plaza there by Jungle Gyms. Mm -hmm. Two East End St. John's boys yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So we know, know it well. You, you know <laughs> it. Um, uh, then we went to Stephenville. Um, then Whitburn is another drive through it's just on the highway where the old Robins used to be. It's attached to Ultramar. And that's a wonderful store there, too. Um, Claraville, Bonavista. Did I get them all? You got yeah, them all. I got them all. I mean, that's, but that's a lot of expansion, too, right? So Within, like, all during the pandemic within a year and three months. And you're hiring people that you need them to understand, because as you say, it's about, about education as mm -hmm. well, right? So you need to hire people that but, are- you know, as much as we hire very passionate, knowledgeable people, we also are not afraid to educate right. our staff. And okay. as long as they're willing to learn, if you're, if you're coachable, come on. Come on in. Yeah. And has the pandemic been challenging for you to find staff and things like that? No, I know it's very different. Okay, I want to hear about that. From everyone, everyone always asks me, um, you know, because I know that there's a labor shortage. I know that everyone's really struggling. But again, I feel like because this is a brand new industry and the people that we do find are just wonderful and they come to us. Right. They want to work here. So it's not just like any other retail job or any other. It is a passionate job for them and they're happy to be here. Right. Taylor, I want to go back a little bit um, yeah. and not so much talk about the cannabis as, as uh, specifically or even the automation in your plant or anything like that. I want to talk about something that you made mention of quite strongly mm -hmm. when you talked about it, and that is your husband. Yeah. Uh, Jerry and I are very fortunate. We too have very supportive partners mm. that allow us to take yeah. uh, our journey in directions that might not make sense to people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right out of the gate. Right. But this adventure we're on right now is but, a good example. <laughs> but we can't do it without that support. Tell me about that, the importance of yeah. that. Yeah. Colin is, I mean, anyone who knows Colin, he's um, he's just a magnificent person. I mean, and I, I say he can put an arse in the cat. That's, that's the truth. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, in seriousness, he built a state-of-the-art facility and, um, you know, because he's just knowledgeable like that, not that because he's trained, but he managed to do that and he's on his, he's working, he'd be here today, but he's working, he's on the eighth retail store. Wow. Yeah. Is he an engineer, no. precision ag person? By no, he's self-taught carpenter, finished carpenter, he's self-taught everything. Wow. Did he make the shelving unit that we're yes. looking at? It's pretty cool. Yeah. So did everything, just taught himself how to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm going to get His back. His grandfather, the same grandfather who inspired me to create Oceanic, taught him a lot of what he knows about woodworking and carpentry. Okay, now let's go to the plant. Mm -hmm. 160 people were laid off. 125. 125 yeah. were laid off. How many are back? Um, so uh, total payroll, uh, there's 70 on the payroll, but uh, there's about 30 of them are retail, so 40. Right. So four. Yeah. fantastic, Taylor. Isn't Congratulations. Yeah. So when you that call you, them and said if they create, you create one job yeah. and you created 40. Yeah. Many are some of the people the same as they were at the. Yes. Tell me about that. We will hire anybody who used to work at that fish plant because they are already process oriented and they do a really good job, you know, because of course there's a lot of packaging, there's a lot of pre-roll making, it's, but it's very systematic. Right. And they come in there and they show us up. They know exactly what to do and we tell them once and then they do it better. Right. There are no strangers to hard work. No. People who work in fish plants. No. I used to work in a fish plant. I used to scrape barnacles off crabs. Oh, I thought it was the best thing ever when I was 16 <laughs> years old with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Taylor, this uh, story that you're describing, yeah. you'll probably be aware of a theatrical performance that Alan Doyle is mm. currently in called 
Telltale Harbor. Telltale Harbor is the story of a fish plant mm. that goes under, and they repurpose it in the movie, oh. uh, The Grand Seduction. Cool. They repurpose it into a waste uh, management. management plant. Cool. But in the theatric performance, because it starts in PEI, they promote they repurpose it into a potato, a French fry plant. Yeah. But I, it's on its way here, so it tells me that there might be a deviation in the story mm. that it could be easily <laughs> repurposed. Totally. Into, I mean, this is an incredible story. But the story is a beautiful one that uh, Alan Doyle is involved in, and mm. it is a story of a community coming together. Yeah. And it sounds to me like that's just that's, what this is. That's exactly what it is. And like the people who work, well, Jenny, for example, who works here, you've met. Uh, she, I, I joke, she came with the store. We bought this place and she came with it and we never want her to leave. And right. similar to, and we've created a family around Jenny and around key people in the plant. You know, Joy, Rick, um, who else? Lisa, they all used to work 25 years in the fish plant. Wow. And now we have new young blood coming in who want to make it their home, want, like coming from Mount Pearl, like setting roots in Little Buren. Right. Well, it's a beautiful place. It's a, the, yeah, it's untouched beauty. It's Just, gorgeous. Um, you know, Taylor, I'm, I'm really excited for you and what you're doing. And I can see when you started talking about how many employees you had, you just lit right up. Yeah. It's a credit to you and your husband. Uh, business is just so interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. You are providing a life for people in this beautiful community and um, I'm proud of you and I just met you but <laughs> from a rural Newfoundland perspective this yep. to me is fascinating mm -hmm. what you're doing repurposing a fish plant right and hiring back the people well, that was, lost their jobs it fantastic was easy it was easy when I realized easy. The, it was easy <laughs> it, well it was easy to make the decision to go rural okay because when I realized in my studies of okay where cannabis was going realized that okay medical and recreation the same thing recreation is coming online holy crap and the numbers there are there was a fi financial like a lot to be made I'm like well why not like st. John's got it already we, yeah, we can purpose build, but that's going to cost a lot more as well. Right. So it was an easy decision to be like, I would much rather provide rural jobs. So <laughs> it, your, your product now, uh, you said 1,000 kilograms mm -hmm. and growing to 4,000 kilograms. Mm -hmm. Is it all... Uh, going to Newfoundland? It's all going to Newfoundland, but is it all, how's it all consumed? Is there edibles and everything? Yeah, so uh, right now what we do is mainly just flour. Um, Pre-rolls are a really big uh, thing, so that's just, you know, processing into a different form. Uh, we will be doing edibles and different, um, but I'm unsure if we're going to do it at the actual facility or, or, or cr I don't like to reinvent the wheel. Right. You know, like there's lots of partners out there that can uh, can do that, uh, and we can, you know, trade the cannabis for for the. Right. So we'll be using our own cannabis and our own oil, uh, but yeah, the edibles and vaping could be another thing that comes online as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a whole. Like every time you open a new mm -hmm. door in that industry, it's there's, exciting, isn't it? It is super exciting. We're, yeah. We also have our hemp license, and we're going to be growing hemp locally outdoors. The possibilities for hemp are endless. I mean, the hemp side of things with the CBD, you know, everyone knows about CBD and the medical benefits, but the actual stock of the hemp and how we know we can, you know, wear hemp and we can, but there's, it can go on and yeah. on and on to cottonizing hemp to making it more refined. You can make, you know, um, and, what am I trying to say? Um, you can make products like diapers or sa or right. feminine sanitary that is already micro um, antimicrobial, antiviral. Mm -hmm. Right. It's endless. There'd be many people in this part of the world, the older generation, that would have hemp run through their hands on fishing lines right. and stuff like that. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's an incredible product. You can build product. houses with hemp. You like, can build houses with yeah, hemp. You're absolutely just research right. Research hempcrete. I, I did not know that, so yeah. I'm learning here. Hempcrete. Google yeah. it. It's really. Amazing. And I think that's a Canadian company, right? Hempcrete, is it? You know? um, well, they're, they're, yeah, you'll you'll be seeing in the next few years right. lots of different products. And like yeah. they basically built this, build the houses out of um, the 
the inner parts of the hemp uh, stock and they mix it with limestone. Yeah. So then it's naturally like it just keeps your house environmentally, you know, cool, hot, antimicrobial, antiviral. It's perfect. So the name of the company, Oceanic. Oceanic. Great name. Thanks. Where did it come from? Um, me. <laughs> um, but the reason why we went with Oceanic was everyone can relate to the ocean. And everyone usually relates to the ocean, whether it's, but it's, a, it's a healing thing. Right. You know, whether you go to the ocean to feel happy, fun, you're playing on the sand with your kids, whatever, it is a very healing, calming and I also wanted to boast about Newfoundland, but in the most sophisticated way that you know people from Norway or people from anywhere else could relate to the brand. Right. You hit you hit the nail on the head with the ocean. I mean, the ocean is life, right? That it is life. The movement of yeah. the ocean is it's like, it's almost like breathing mm -hmm. or a heartbeat, and you stand there and you look at it, and mm -hmm. something about staring out at the ocean yep. is calming, isn't it? It is. Even the word oceanic is calming right it? so then the color tones that we went with was you know of course ocean blues right. and whites and stuff so it's just pleasing aesthetically pleasing to the eye when you walk in and it's calm um, we then created so of course oceanic is our wellness lifestyle brand and it's a brand that we want everyone to trust but we also recognize that there's you know different consumers and different um, mm -hmm. brands that we needed to create it so we created our another brand called seaweed which is funner and louder right. yeah. and you know more for the people who you know might want to get high you know yeah. that's their purpose yeah. you know right. they want to have fun so we created a different brand yeah. and seaweed which is uh, equally as awesome because of course you know it's seaweed <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. um, and then we also created our uh, third brand which just launched and called booty uh, but a play on words with pirate's booty and there's an anchor involved uh, just and it's more of the value uh, cannabis that you yeah. can purchase. Well, uh, Relief is a little play on yeah. words as well, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's some other brand. Relief, of course, is just a you know relief of everything because I truly and honestly believe that there's cannabis for everyone medically, mm -hmm. and regardless if you know it or not, you're healing something in your body. I like uh, plays on words, eh? Yeah. yeah Gale Force wins Gale Force. without a D, eh? Hey? So, uh, <laughs> so not that Gale Force wins is going to invest four million dollars here today, or unless you're really waiting to. Just but, second but, up. Uh, what is? Uh, how would you describe your unfair competitive advantage? Well, how is your product better than everybody else's? It's made with love, all yeah. kinds of love. It's um, it's made with passion. We care very, very much about it, mm -hmm. and. Um, but Oceanic as a whole, we are a local company. A lot of people actually didn't even realize we were a local company because like, maybe the branding's done so well, but we are a local company and we care about each individual community out there. Right. Uh, the products we listen to, we have the ability to listen to customers and change it on a dime. Yeah. You know, so we actually take, we have, we just got, that's the meeting I got called off of uh, was our team leads. And one of the questions like, hey, what's your customer saying this week? You know, so we know exactly what products to offer. Yeah, this is not the Coors Light of cannabis, no. right? This is no. a special product It's, for it's sure. craft, we're small enough to make yeah. those decisions. We don't have a board of directors, you know, yeah. it, it ends with Colin and I, okay, yeah, let's do it. You know, the, <laughs> as small is good sometimes, right? It, it allows you that agility, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you can get that feedback, from your customer and yep. implement it, that's amazing because mm -hmm. as companies get bigger and bigger and bigger, yep. they lose that, right? Absolutely. So, so yeah, we really listen to the customer and, and we just create different products that they need. What's over the horizon? Oh, lots. Tell us. All of it. Uh, well, we're opening our eighth store, uh, which is going to be a game changer. It's our second store in St. John's, and we're really excited about that. What well, location again? On O'Leary Avenue? O'Leary Avenue. Uh, is that by the Avalon Mall? Yep, yeah. right by the Avalon Mall. So we're actually replacing the Tweed that was on Kemet Road that okay. just shut down. Um, so, yeah, we are now the new cannabis shop in town. Um, it's right across from the new uh, Spin Studio Verso. So we're, we're going to try to do some partnerships because I believe in health in like incorporating cannabis in a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I, I actually have learned a lot about cannabis from being a new consumer. And I come at this from a new consumer perspective, not from, you know, uh, under, 
been consuming it for years and understanding it. Mm -hmm. um, so I've learned that cannabis for me elevates everything that I really want to do. So I just use it in coordination of what I want to do and I use it before I work out all the time. Right. So that's something that we really want to uh, start doing is the educate people on how they can incorporate it little bits into their life to elevate what they're doing. All these entrepreneurs in your family that you talked to at the beginning, they must be looking at you like, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they are. And they probably still do, but that's okay. Yeah. They also... Is there you know, more people in the family involved? Uh, just more so support from, from right. my parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, whenever I'm down, I usually get a, a funny, cheeky little thing from my father <laughs> to, to uh, pump me back up. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, Jerry, what a great conversation this was. Your thoughts? Well, just, you know, as you've grown, what what do you do to keep yourself grounded? Having 40 employees. I have a seven-year-old. Ah. <laughs> I have a seven-year-old, and we also bought a farm. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Because you weren't busy enough, you no, bought a farm? Yeah. Oh, what are you farming? I need to know this <laughs> oh, as well. Oh, Angus. Angus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. If <laughs> That could All be right. a whole other episode. That's a whole another hour. Episode. Yeah. But that, that's, uh, that's my husband's thing. So, yeah. uh, But no, honestly, what keeps me grounded is uh, I meditate. I do a lot of breath work. And honestly, I, I keep telling people, because people are like, are you staying out in Buren? Because, I mean, the, the plan was to kind of come out here, get, get everything set up, and yeah. probably move back. No, we're not moving back because the quietness and the stillness and the simple life is what grounds us because yeah. we have so much going on in our life. Right. Well, and you were on the ocean yesterday, you told us. Yeah. There's nothing better than that, is nothing it? Nothing better. So we do all the simple things. We boat and we go to the farm. We go to beaches. I go to, I've been to every beach around here and we just live a very simple grounding life. And yet run a cannabis empire. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just... Thank it's you. Easy, right? <laughs> Thank you for jumping out of that meeting. Yeah. The meeting didn't even end. You just yeah, came. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, I'm so proud of what you and your husband have done. Mm. Newfoundland needs more thinking and more doing just like this, Alan. Business will turn around yeah. the challenges we have here. Yeah. Well, uh, that was a great conversation. I have to tell you that we've been uh, in conversation with many, many people in Newfoundland, in this province, that are doing wonderful things. Uh, but this one is very, very special. I mean, to breathe life back into the community mm -hmm. uh, is something very, very special. You should be incredibly proud. I mean, I, I can't imagine how the town of Bjorn must have been thinking when they got that call and say, yeah, we're thinking about setting up a cannabis plant, yeah. the old fish plant. But yet they leaned into it as well, they did. right? They, and made, they crack jokes here and there about the, the smells going to be different coming out of the fish plant. But, <laughs> right. but ultimately, they are our biggest supporters and they're just thrilled that we're, you know, revitalizing the community. And that was the plan from day one. Well, this is a story of passion, of resilience, of, uh, you know, not being afraid to try something mm -hmm. new and understanding the importance of community. This, mm -hmm. this story has it all, and we certainly appreciate it. This is a wonderful addition to Gale Force Winds, and thank you very much. And I, too, uh, oh, actually, I need to ask you one last thing. Oh, what's that? <laughs> if you'd leave the audience with a piece of advice. Ah. Fail fast and pivot. Yeah. Don't Just get, let that hold for a second. Yeah. Fail fast and, and pivot. pivot. What a wonderful mm. piece of advice, especially now. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially now. Well, that was great. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for uh, taking us on this journey and inviting us into your wonderful coffee shop here in mm -hmm. Bjorn. It's, uh, it's spectacular. I, too, will leave the uh, podcast with my own piece of advice. And quite frankly, the world needs more Taylor Giovannini. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.